Today I'm going to talk about focus bracketing and focus stacking for Olympus cameras. Okay, so focus bracketing is another technique you should have in your photography skill set. And um, Olympus really makes that very, very easy uh, by including a focus bracketing feature on the camera. Uh, some Olympus cameras, like I know the EM1s, the, the Mark I and the Mark II, uh, have something called focus stacking as well. But a lot of the Olympus cameras, they only have the focus bracketing feature, like my Pen F and my EM10 that's recording this now. And you'll have to actually stack the photos in post-processing using software, either, either Photoshop or another software I'll show you that's free in just a minute. But either way, um, focus bracketing is basically telling the camera to take multiple shots and then change the focus point from front to back as it's taking those shots. So, you know, like if I was taking a picture of this ruler here, I would focus here first and then start taking pictures. Um, and the camera's going to automatically take the next picture and focus here, uh, then focus here and take the next picture, then focus here and take the next picture, and so on. And then what you'll have is, say, maybe 10 pictures of this ruler, each one focused on a different point. And if you look at any individual picture, say, let's say this picture here, that focused here, you'll notice this part will be in focus, but then the front of the ruler, then towards the back, will be out of focus. And the reason you do focus bracketing is because you're going to stack these pictures together because you know the camera took 10 pictures at different focus points. So it's going to stack those 10 pictures together, <clears throat> but only the sharpest part of each picture so that the end result will be a single image with everything in focus on the ruler. And that's sort of the, the mechanics of what you want to do. You know, and typically you'll see like a picture of a flower and everything is in sharp focus from the front of the petals to very back of the petals. Um, you know, sometimes you'll see macro photography shots of insects. Um, you know, and that's generally done with a macro lens, but you need a ton of light. So those pictures are almost always with external flash or it's in a studio and you have a ton of lighting. Um, and if you don't have a macro lens or you don't have tons of lighting, focus stacking is really a viable option for something like that as well. As long as the subject's not moving, uh, like flowers or um, product photography, things like that. Uh, and, I, and I mentioned earlier that some of the Olympus cameras have the focus stacking built in. Um, and that's really a nice feature, but it has a couple limitations. One is you only can take eight pictures of a subject and it stacks them together and then the final image is a JPEG and with focus bracketing you can set up to 999 images and stack those together but you can take them in raw edit them in bulk you know to get a nice final image and then stack them together and get a JPEG or even possibly a raw or TIFF file uh, for the purposes of this uh, video, I'm going to be doing everything in JPEG because I just wanted to show you the basic technique of how to do it in the camera and then how to stack them in software afterwards. So let's take this uh, uh, scene right here. Um, you can look at it here on the screen. And I'm going to zoom in a bit to 25 millimeters. Let me do a little composition. Okay, so. Um, let's take this scene here for example. I want to get a picture of my battle star and then I want to get a picture of say this TIE fighter. And normally, you know, I could just take a picture. I'll just focus here, say on the nose of the battle star and take a picture. And if I go back and look at it, you know, of course, the nose of the battle star is perfectly in focus. But then the back, where the TIE fighter is, is out of focus. And creatively speaking, maybe that's the kind of shot you want. But if you want to get the battle star and the uh, TIE fighter in focus, 
uh, you'll either have to increase your depth of field or your, your or decrease your aperture down to say f22 or you can do focus stacking um, so let's do this with focus stacking and the way to let you know first thing I'll do is I'll go into the camera and it's here in shooting menu number two right now bracketing is off and I'll scroll down and this turns it on but you'll notice a little arrow here so let's right click here that means there's more options and the default setting for bracketing is uh, auto exposure bracketing which is the most common use for bracketing and just about any decent camera can do but we'll need to turn that off and you know notice all the way down here is the focus bracketing so we'll go over here come down and then you'll notice again another right arrow which means I can click over and this is where we can set the number of shots we want to take and I'm gonna set this to 20 okay and then this is the, the focus differential meaning um, how much do you want it to change focus from one picture to the next and because this scene is relatively small and close up I'm going to set this to the narrowest difference in focus. There's also an option here for charge time. So if you're using a flash, um, you can tell it to wait before taking the next picture so that chat, the flash has time to charge up. Okay, so I'll click OK. I'll click OK again. Now focus bracketing is on. I'll click OK again. Now bracketing in general is on, and I'll click OK again. And now it says here, bracketing is on. And it's important you click the OK all those times all the way out. Don't just back out of the menu by hitting the menu button. Um, another thing I like to do is confirm that I have the bracketing mode on by checking this little icon here. It's in bracketing mode. But before I take any bracketed pictures, actually what I like to do let's turn bracketing off real quick is I like to take my first picture pointing at the first focus point for the focus bracketing so I'm gonna touch screen here with my focus point and take a picture here okay and that'll be my first picture I'll explain why I do that uh, in a minute okay so let's go ahead and turn the bracketing back on Okay, and I'm going to double check to make sure my focus bracketing hasn't changed. Scroll down, right click, right click again, and yeah, 20 shots, one increment. Okay. And we're good. Now the bracketing icon is on. I'm going to set my focus point here to where I pointed to before, and I'm just going to click the shutter button once. And now the camera is going to take 20 pictures, changing the focus point from front to back. And now I'm going to turn the bracketing off. Okay. And I'm going to take one more picture of just my hand, flat like this, meaning to me what that means is this is sort of a break point for me or a marker between bracketed shots so that when I bring them back in the post the first picture I know is always going to be me pointing at the first focus point and the last picture of that bracketing uh, group is going to be my hand like this because you notice I said originally to take 20 pictures in one step increments and if I got that wrong let's say I only need 10 shots or let's say I need you know a hundred shots or I need to change the focusing increment from one to five um, you know during that experimentation I'll know the beginning and end point of each of those bracketed uh, groups because I know where my finger went here and then my hand went like this and when I'm in post and as you can see here when you got hundreds of pictures uh, it just makes it a lot easier in post to see uh, you know where each group of bracketed shots are okay so just a little tip um, okay we just took those pictures so let's go ahead and take a look at them 
and that's obviously the very last picture of the group so let's back off one and zoom in and this was the last picture meaning this is the last point it focused on all the way towards the end of the scene so we're gonna go scroll up to the top and make sure that the TIE fighter is in focus and looks like it is but let's let's back up one more yeah that's looking good as I I'm just turning the dial here uh, to go back and let me go down let's see it looks like it's gradually going out of focus here so let's go down to the ruler and follow it that way and zoom out a little And I should be able to go back all the way to where my finger was. And I know that was the first shot. So it looks like 20 pictures with an increment of one was just right for this scene. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into the computer now. And I actually, I went outside and took a picture of something a little, you know, uh, real life instead of just this studio scene and uh, of a mushroom just to show you something a little more interesting than, you know, this prop. Okay, so let's go into the computer and take a look. Okay, so from this point in the video, I'm going to go into the software side of stacking the photos together. And if you have Photoshop CC or really almost any recent version of Photoshop, I'm going to refer you to Flern's video, and I'll put a link down below, uh, where he does a pretty good tutorial on how to do focus stacking in Photoshop and uh, it's, it's a nice complimentary video to this video or vice versa so if you have Photoshop uh, you can go ahead and head over there now uh, if you don't have Photoshop or you'd like to see how to do this using a different software uh, and it's free and I'll put a link down below to that as well uh, you can stick along here so if you're leaving hopefully we'll see you again soon if not uh, uh, okay let's see what we're doing here uh, basically uh, this is the setup I have. I just found this mushroom out in the front yard and I set up the camera to uh, do focus stacking. So the first thing I do is I select the focus point here in the front and then um, I adjust the exposure slightly and I, I have a video on how to do uh, adjust your exposure. It's called I think uh, tweaking your histogram for best exposure. Um, you might want to check that out uh, to kind of understand what these blue and red highlights mean. But uh, in any case, moving on, um, I'm going to turn this. Right now, the bracketing's on, so I had to turn the bracketing off like I did in the studio. And I took the first picture here of me just pointing at the uh, first focus point. And then I went back and I turned the bracketing back on and I clicked the shutter button. The camera proceeded to take 20 pictures, gradually moving the focus point to the back of the mushroom. And let's let's go there. So here are the 20 pictures starting here and ending here. And um, I did take, like I said, I turned the bracketing off and I took one more picture of my hand here just to kind of mark where the end of this focus bracketing uh, groups ends and again you know when you're out there in the field and you're experimenting um, when you come back in the post this makes it ten times years easier to see where one focus bracketing group starts and the next one uh, starts then the next one after that because you want you'll you'll need to experiment depending on the distance of the subject um, the lens you're using the focal length the aperture etc so you might end up taking several hundred pictures uh, in just a few minutes and then when you bring those back in the post uh, this just makes it a lot easier I think to select the photos you want to uh, process okay um, now like I said I put the link down below to the uh, free software here it is Picolay so download that and install it let's go ahead and open that up and we got three windows here 
the first one is just the file list which we'll add to this is sort of a preview of the images in the file list and then this will be the final window of the end result okay so let's go ahead and add the images and I'm not going to start here I'm going to start here scroll down to the end until I see my hand and I know that's the end so I'm going to select here and I'm going to open those 20 files all at once okay and that's it there so now everything's loaded and I can zoom in a little bit and just kind of visually inspect that this is in focus and then let me look at the last picture and I can see that the very end of the mushroom is in focus okay and so I know that every picture in between is a different focus point along this mushroom so to stack these images all you have to do is go to stack operations click the uh, set stacking parameters and there's some options here and you can kind of experiment with these but I'll show you what I do or what I did for this picture so I'm gonna click align images and I'm gonna click set test four parameters and I'll talk about that while this is processing okay so we'll just click go and then this little window pops up to kind of give you some idea of where it's at um, basically you know if I wanted to take say uh, pictures so that the grass in the background here was in focus instead of taking 20 shots I might have taken 50 shots and then I would compare you know the shots 21 22 23 and what would happen is if I had stacked all 50 pictures most likely this background would be very much in focus uh, just like the mushroom but creatively speaking that's not what I want to do for this picture but if I had taken 50 shots and I wanted the background to be blurry all I'd have to do is select the first 20 or select the first group of pictures that show the area of the subject that I want to be in focus and then I'll leave everything else out of focus so uh, it never hurts to take more pictures than you need if you take fewer pictures than you need then you're gonna have to start over and start focus bracketing and doing adjustments and, and that's what I meant about experimenting with different focal lengths like for this uh, set I used my 25 millimeter lens and I set the aperture to f2.8 um, if I were to do this picture over, I'd probably set it to f1.7 and take 30 pictures so that this background might even be a little bit blurrier uh, than it's being shown here. Uh, but like I said, just experiment, have some fun with it and see. Okay, uh, looks like it's almost done. These colors, you know, there's some sort of color scheme going on over here, I guess showing you what it processed and what it didn't have to process. Um, seems like the green area is everything it found to be sharp. And it's done. Okay, so it writes four, it just wrote four picture files to the same directory that I loaded the original files in. And you can see them down here and each one is processed a little bit differently and I loaded these into Lightroom earlier and let's do a quick comparison okay. so on the left here is the very first picture of the focus bracketing group and on the right here is one of those four processed images from the PicoLay software and you can see how over here the entire mushroom is in focus and over here only part of the mushroom is in focus so let's zoom in let's take a closer look and look what a beautiful job that software did everything in the mushroom is focused but the background is still uh, nice and blurry um, not as blurry as uh, you know the original photo but still not not bad um, creatively speaking I, I would be pretty content with this Let's take a look down here look at the stem of the mushroom and all of the detail I captured through focus stacking you know, this is uh, just lovely 
Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, let's look at one of the other ones uh, that were processed by the software. And, you know, these look pretty identical. There's a little bit less contrast on this particular uh, process version. But I, if I didn't mention it before, the reason it does four different process versions is because sometimes when an object is moved a little bit or maybe your lens has a little bit of focus breathing, on the edges of the uh, sharp uh, parts of the picture, you might see some artifacts uh, in one process versus another. The artifacts may be a little stronger. Um, like I can see a tiny bit here where there's like right here, there's a little bit of a blur look here, where it's it's not really over here as much. Um, so maybe selecting a different one, let's take a look at this. Oh, it's still there, but, but that's the idea kind of behind processing four different variations is to, you want to pick the best of the four based on you know, different parameters that the software decides, you know, looks the best. And if you go and download the manual, you can kind of read about everything that this software can do. But basically I did on full auto and it did a fine job uh, with very little, uh, you know, settings and things that I would have to do. But uh, okay, that's, that's basically it. Um, that's all I wanted to show. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, go ahead and leave them in the uh, comments down below. And um, I'm going to try and make some more videos using Olympus cameras or PenF specifically. Uh, sometimes maybe the EM10 Mark II, which is my other, other Olympus camera. So go ahead and sub subscribe so you get notified of those. And uh, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.